Welcome back guys, Tactical AV here. Alright, so this is the next video after getting our Spectrum internet equipment. This is going to actually be about activating the equipment after everything's been plugged in and set up. So most likely you're going to get a piece of paper like this. It's the instructions as to what to do with the equipment. I know this is pretty self-explanatory and most people probably do know how to do this and what to do. However, I'm just trying to make it easier for folks that don't quite know or understand exactly what to do and just help some people along. So hopefully I'm able to help you kind of understand what to do here. But after you have plugged everything in and you've made sure that there's an active service line to your home and you're getting and paying for internet and you've got everything plugged in and well partially set up at least, you're going to want to register things and activate the stuff online. Now, granted, before doing this, prior to this, of course I have the internet. It's on Spectrum Wi-Fi right now, as you can see here. I haven't changed the SSID yet or any of the passwords yet. We'll be going ahead and doing that later here. I just kind of want to show you how I'm getting to this process. So, we're going to want to go to activate.spectrum.net or you can just type in spectrum.net slash self-install. Obviously, we're just going to hit the Get Started tab right here and see where it takes us. So you're going to want to verify it with your primary phone number or the account number. I find the account number a little bit harder to find, so we're just going to do phone number here. And So we've actually had some rough patches with Spectrum recently while setting this up. We had four techs come over from Spectrum. They had no idea what the problem was. They kept making us call Spectrum for this, for this, for this. And to come to find out, it was only just to register. So how can techs not know that that's pretty sad? All right, so next up, you just want to enter the service zip code as well. And as you can see here, guys, even I'm also having problems doing this. So we're going to get this figured out. It is interesting that they tell us you can find your account number on the billing statement or in the welcome letter you received. Well, that's funny because I haven't received any billing statements since I just activated service yesterday and, well, I haven't received any welcome letter yet. And, of course, where the employee was supposed to write down the account number and phone number is blank. But, hey, don't worry, guys. We're here to help. I am going to be honest with you guys, though, it is going to be a little bit easier to call up and change these things like your SSID and your password and all of that. And in addition, well, to get the darn account numbers. Updating our security practices to better protect your account. Unfold your security code, which is found on the upper left-hand corner of your bill. If you're calling to make a change to your account, please have this information ready. And if somebody was moving the mouse cursor, you know, they were in his computer that quick. Viruses and this malware stuff. Mm. All right, the registration.rr. Hit agree here. I'll write and then type in the email address associated with the account, I assume. And it looks like the registration is complete, at least on the Spectrum's website end. Let's go ahead and hit finish here. I'll just go ahead and take the speed test while I'm at it then. <laughs> Yeah, very surprising. I'm I'm getting over 90 meg a second Wi-Fi on 2G. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, could you explain that one more time? So you're saying that with the Wi-Fi, you're essentially paying four dollars for the Wi-Fi service, and I believe it's like eight bucks for the router. You could cut that out by getting your own router. Uh, on the billing, I'm just checking on this to see, to see what, how the, your plan is set up. Yeah, you do pay $5 a month for the Wi-Fi service. So then there's just a base charge of the $44.99 for the Internet. Right. So you'll have that no matter what. You'll have that no matter what. Right. So there's no charge on the modem itself, but the Wi-Fi service is $5 a month. Uh, and then the router, is there a charge for the router? There's no charge for the router. Oh. If you get some interference or if you get intermittent drops, that kind of thing, typically it's a, it's a interference from another Wi-Fi router and probably somebody with one of those nice bugs <laughs> drowning out your signal because it's just, you know, they're broadcasting a louder radio frequency, if you will. And uh, so the one way we can do that is adjust or change the channel settings. Right. And you experience so that. there's 11 different channels, huh? Whether it's 2G or 5G? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and then out of the box... 
All, all routers are set to automatically choose the channel. And on the 2G, it's channel 1, 6, and 11. And on the 5G, I think it's uh, channel 40, 149, I think 48 on the 5G. And so, like, when if somebody calls in and talks about, you know, says that that's what's going on, and I see the signal's good, no interference, downstream is good, the upstream is good, and it's a Wi-Fi drops, weird intermittent connectivity on um, some of our routers they have a tool and we can scan for all the wi-fi networks in the area so mm-hmm. like if you had a smartphone and you pulled up available wi-fi networks you could see the listing of them right well so we the, the tool will let us see the name of that wi-fi network the device that's broadcasting it and the mac address and then the channel that they're broadcasting on right so it pulls up the table and i can see you know i can see hey there are 19 networks wi-fi networks um eight of them are using channel one and yours is set to channel one i'm going to locate you know, channel two, three, you know, f- four. Right, uh, right. Seven, you know, one of the other ones where nobody else is. My right. Have to with channel three. In efforts to and, boost uh, up I'll, the speed, yeah. That. Yep. Just- so in the URL, type in the 192.168.1.1. Okay. Uh-huh. Right now. What would the actual username and password be then? Yeah, and that's just got to be generic for every customer who starts service then until they change it, huh? Network, okay, yep. Quick settings web page right here. All right, folks, so I'm glad we were able to get customer service on the phone because instead of actually going to this spectrum.net slash activate and all that, we were simply able to just go to the quick settings web page. As I said before, it's going to uh, be default username admin and password admin. And from there, you're going to be able to change everything you're pretty much going to need to set your Wi-Fi up at home, your SSID. You're able to change your password, use the same settings for 5G versus 2G, so on and so forth. So I think everything you're going to need to do should be right here. If you guys still got further questions and if I have problems after this, well, I'll be sure to let you guys know. All right, guys, so I went ahead and changed our SSID. Just make sure then, once you've done that, everything's going to disconnect that you've been connected to, at least Wi-Fi. You're going to want to go ahead and reconnect to that, put your new passwords in, save them if you'd like, and you're running wireless again. And once you've connected, you should see this, set your network up on your computer, and you should be good to go. Now keep in mind, you are gonna wanna use this web page to kinda of make sure all of your stuff is intact, passwords, usernames, and whatnot, and to be able to change stuff about your network, router, parental control services, and general internet. So what I'm gonna do here is also suggest that instead of having that username and password kept as admin, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set up a username or at very least a password. So go ahead and change those passwords from admin. So go ahead and you make sure you update the proper settings and you're able to make other changes as well. Keep in mind, you're still welcome to go to this uh, spectrum.net slash self install and it'll kinda of give you everything I've ran through in this video in case it was poorly done or just wasn't clear enough for you to understand. Once again, guys, have any questions or concerns or problems, please let me know down in the comment section, and I will reiterate the fact that if I have any further issues or things arise, well, you can be sure that I'll be doing another video on them or letting you know shortly. I will point out, so last but not least, we're just going to sign into our wireless devices that we've been using, and well... I did want to quickly point out the 2G versus 5G, as some people can be confused on that. You know, pretty much if I've got a computer that'll only activate 2G, well, it'll only give you that option. You won't be given the option to activate 5G. However, if you've got a compliant device that can act, you know, use the 5G network, well, you're going to want to use that if you're in a shorter distance because it will be higher speeds. So guys, just to briefly explain, we actually technically cut the cord here and made the change from Spectrum, you know, TV and having cable and just instead moved to just getting our local channels with an antenna capable for HD TV tuning. And that was simply because the internet doesn't really change the bill. However, when you do have cable services from these companies, Spectrum likes to change the packages uh, kind of on you know their own terms and prices can raise and well, the bill can change. Now I will point out, at least in our area, we were offered what's called the Spectrum Essential uh, package which is about $15 a month and it's a streaming service that includes these channels right here that you see in front of me. However, 
I was informed that you do not get any local channels, which is kind of odd and interesting. So you're going to need an antenna if you're just going to go with this streaming package anyways. But, well, it might do the job for some people. Well, that's going to wrap this video up, guys. I thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. But after all, guys, don't forget to subscribe. And, well, I got a lot more stuff coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Most of all, take care.